we got another wonderful half off day and I'm going to use it to show you how to buy and process dolls. I have a three part doll series up that goes more in depth about what qualities I look for in dolls that indicate it might be worth money, but I never showed the process from start to finish from a thrifting perspective. So let's get into it and see if we can make some money. Doll bags are tough because you can't always see what's inside, but what I'm seeing here are two things that bode well. One is the price, you're getting dolls for under a dollar a piece, and two, most of them come with clothing. Really nice, interesting clothing too. If the dolls don't pan out, I can easily sell off the clothes and probably do okay. If it's a bag of naked dolls and I don't spot any of my tips from my video series, I'm probably not buying. I ended up with six doll bags half off for a total of $11. 11 bucks for all these dress dolls is a total steal, or we'll see anyway. Let's get processing. I'm gonna start by opening all the bags and showing you what's inside and my first impressions. Then I'll get into identifying and comping. One of these things is not like the others. One of these things is Lumiere from Beauty and the Beast on Broadway. He'll definitely be worth looking up. Pretty standard looking blonde Barbie in a flower dress, not exciting. Halloween looking Barbie, that's perfect since I'm a month out from Halloween right now. Crochet bikini Barbie, might be worth something. I'm very excited about this one. Fully articulated boy dolls have been some of my highest selling dolls and this one has a face I haven't seen before. So I have a hunch he's gonna be good. This one doesn't really look special. I love the look of this Barbie, but her hair is a mess. Her clothes though, I think will be highly marketable. Very retro futuristic. Not a doll, but I'll look it up anyway. Yikes on several bikes. I have my doubts about this one, but she is dressed, so who knows. Naked Cinderella, probably worthless. Oh look, she has a wig. Still creepy. Another one I saw from outside the bag and had a good feeling about. She's completely dressed and she has roller skates. A good sign since foot coverings are super uncommon on used dolls. Mickey Mouse bottle, probably worthless. Another doll I have a good feeling about because her hairstyle is original. She's completely dressed with her shoes sitting in the bag. And Bratz have been doing really well for me lately. Doll isn't anything special, but her outfit will probably sell nicely. Naked Barbie sister, nothing special. Another dressed brat stall, she'll probably do well too. We got Baby Spice, but her head looks too far down on the neck, so I'm betting it's broken. If nothing, I'm sure I can add the dress to the clothing pile I'll be making. Rooted hair Ken with an older face. Rooted hair Kens are less common than normal Kens, and the newer ones with rooted hair tend to be worth more than these guys. Her red hair is unique, but nothing else is, and unfortunately, that's a pretty bad stain. Another nothing special doll, and I'm sorry, but I don't think her outfit is very marketable either. I can already tell this is tour guide Barbie, but her outfit has a stain, so I don't know. Naked Kim possible, could be worth something. Brunette Barbie, nothing special. An older man doll, I've sold this outfit before, but this one will be in unsellable condition. Definitely seeing a lot of stained or ripped clothes, so that's not good. Another doll with a dress I think will sell well on its own since the doll is not special. Another dressed but missing one shoe Bratz, I still think she'll do okay. Last bag and we have a short girl doll, which in my experience means it's probably a teenage celebrity doll, likely from the Disney Channel. A fully dressed Monster High. Monster High have gone down in price overall as more resellers have learned of them, but having nearly complete outfits with shoes will still make a good sale. This one has an interesting look to her, we'll see. Another doll that doesn't have a typical Barbie face, in my experience that's usually a good thing, so we'll have to ID her and see what's up. Same goes for her, but her ID jumps right out at me, apparently this is Taylor Swift. I'll have to get a comp on her and hope that these green stains come out. Green usually means marker, so let's hope it's the washable kind. Lastly, a moxie girl with no shoes. She does have a unique pink hair streak though, so she might be worth something. Okay, let's move on to grouping, IDing, and comping. I like to group them up so you're not jumping back and forth through Barbie ID resources and brats and such. We have one group of not Barbies, likely celebrities. Three brats and a moxie girl, which was the doll that briefly replaced brats. Three boy dolls. Six dolls that I had IDs for and just needed comps. And all the Barbies who needed IDs so they could be comped. I know it's tedious, but you really have to ID everyone to be able to comp properly. 
and that's why doll bags just aren't for everyone. I can look at a bag and spot valuable traits, but not know who someone is or what she's worth. You have to put the back end work in for that. The only shortcut comes with gaining knowledge over time. All right, so we got our first looks out of the way. Let's move on to IDing them. How exactly do I do that? If a doll is dressed, there's a very good chance Google Lens will be able to pick it up, so try that first. For example, this doll has a unique outfit and sure enough, Google Lens picked her up no problem. She's trendy bendy Barbie. But what about the far more likely occurrence that it has no idea what you scanned? Then you need to use the Barbie Facebook. I will put a link to that in the description. Look on the back of the head to get an idea of when the mold was first used and then navigate to the type of Barbie, be it Barbie, a friend, or male doll. Then find the matching head mold and then look at the features to find who yours is. In this case, the doll has rooted hair that is short and not slicked back, which narrows it down completely to movie date Ken. It's kind of like a game of guess who. While we're at it, let's ID the next guy with his unusual face. He's also 1997 stamped and happens to be right next to our first dude. And since there are only two dolls using this face mold, that makes it easy. He's from the Barbie and Kenny country duet set. Nude blonde Barbies are going to be the hardest to ID because there's just so many of them, but it can be done. Though dolls like this with absolutely no special features are rarely worth selling by themselves. So if you don't want to deal with this step, just assume they don't have enough value to list individually. They might do okay in a lot if you really want to squeeze every dollar out of your investment, but I'm completely fine with re-donating some stuff if the rest of the bag is good enough. When matching them up to the face pictures, pay close attention to the eye color, bangs or no bangs, where the hair is parting, whether it has earrings or holes for earrings, and the makeup colors. Usually the lip colors are a good place to focus on, whether it's pink or red or plum or nude. Focusing on that can really help narrow it down. Is she fashion wardrobe Barbie? She has the bangs, but her eyes are green and she has earrings. My doll's eyes are not green and there are no earring holes. Is it pretty flowers Barbie? It's almost an exact match, and after looking through the whole list, there's no other doll that matches as well as her, so yes. They don't always 100% match due to factory variances, but you can Google other photos of that doll and compare. In this case, yes, I'm positive it's her. So now that you have your IDs, comping should be easy. You just look them up on eBay by name. Pretty Flowers Barbie, for example, has 103 listed. Just 33 sold. And of those 33, 12 of them were used and none were the blonde one. This doll is a great example of what not to list. It would be a complete dud, so I'm going to put it in the redonate pile. I try not to list dolls that won't sell for $15 to $20 by themselves or don't have some sort of marketable feature. If we comp Taylor Swift, which I further ID'd as being from her Love Story music video, we can see she has two used comps sold right now around $30 shipped. So that is what I'd ask for mine. After all the sorting and IDing and comping, I've decided these are my keepers. 14 individual dolls and some clothing lots I'll get to next. I bought the bags hoping for at least one home run doll I could list for $50, or I would make at least $200 profit on everything. The entire process took about two hours, including taking listing photographs. First up, I did get at least one home run doll. This is a fully dressed Bratz from the original 2000s line of Bratz. I listed her for $60 a few days ago and she already has four watchers. Another Bratz, unfortunately her foot is missing or else I could have gone higher, but I'll ask a reasonable 20. The Moxie girl is kind of not worth it, but I do have another Moxie listed I can pair her with if it comes to it. The pink hair streak is uncommon, so I'm gonna attempt 16. Another fully dressed Bratz, not worth as much as the first one, but her comps lead me to believe that 35 is fair. I couldn't find this exact what's her face, so I'm gonna ask 20. Her clothing is a little damaged. Hey, plush dolls count as dolls too, and if you're in the doll bag, I'm gonna sell you. I comped him at 50, but mine's not in quite as good of a condition as that one, so I'm gonna ask 35. Let's play Guess This Celebrity. Let's put five seconds on the clock. If you guessed Shakira, you're probably the only one, but you'd be right. I listed her a few days ago for 30 and she already has three watchers. And this doll turned out to be Ashley Tisdale as Sharpay from High School Musical. I'm gonna ask 20. Taylor, I'm gonna try and experiment with. I'm gonna ask 35 so that when I send a 15% offer, I will land at my anticipated 30. There were no used comps for Kenny here, so I aimed very close to new prices for the set. 
I've gotten 60 for nude articulated Ken dolls before, so it's not out of the question. This Ken I wouldn't bother with if not for the rooted hair. It's a marketable feature, so I'm gonna list him and see if I can get 20. This Jane Boolittle is nearly complete, only missing a belt. Though even fully dressed, she's not a popular doll. I think I can tempt someone at 25, we'll see. I was surprised how little this roller skate Y2K looking Barbie comp for, but I still aimed pretty high at 25. Lastly, this Teresa would normally go in the donate pile because naked she's nothing special and her clothes are actually ripped but she has a special feature. She's a growing hair doll where you put hair in the back and then pull it up through her head. Someone might want it as is for 25. Then I did three lots of clothing. I grouped the similar length and colored dresses together for 16. They're not very special looking, but they do have a theme. I aimed high on the witch outfits as we head into Halloween. I don't think 25 is out of the question and I already have two watchers. Lastly, the Y2K looking clothes. I adore this metallic purple outfit and I hope someone else does too for 20. Here's who I plan to re-donate and I'll quickly go over why. Some just had no value as nude dolls or their clothing were worth just as much as they are. Why ship a whole doll if you can store and ship an outfit for the same price? A lot were just straight up damaged, like her outfit had more value than she did, her hair texture will be hard to salvage, and her hands are chomped on. Baby Spice, as I suspected, had a broken neck joint. This doll isn't worth much and I don't think her outfit is cute or marketable, but I'll probably strip it and keep the clothes for a miscellaneous lot later. Her dress has a stain I could not get out. And another bad stain. His suit is completely torn. What a shame. If everyone sells for full ask, that's around $450 in sales off an $11 and a few hour investment. Realistically, I'll likely have to mark some down 10 to 20% if they sit a while, which will land me in the $350 range, which still isn't too bad. I'll likely hit my $200 profit goal once everything is said and done. And of course I had some sales while editing. My experiment with Taylor worked. She sold for $29.74 for a profit of $20.49. I didn't mean to include Kenny here in my 15% off sale, but mistakes happen. He sold for $42.49 for a net profit of $31.52. So overall, the bags made their money back quickly and everything else will be pure profit. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. If you made it this far, be sure to like this video or subscribe to my channel. I hope this video helped demystify doll bags for you and you give them a try sometime, but as always, I hope you get out there, have fun, and find something good.